Hey guys, Keaton here with TechSmart, and today we're doing another back to school video. As so many of you guys keep requesting them, and you guys seem to be liking the series, so I'll definitely continue it. And I have an update for you guys before we start. I'm actually heading back to school next Wednesday, which is August 20th, and I'm not looking forward to it at all. My initial date that I told you guys was August 25th, and man, do I really miss that date. I really want those five days back. I'm not looking forward to going back, probably because it's a Wednesday. That's just like, why? Just either call it a Monday or just don't call school. But setting all that aside, we're going to be talking about the best back to school phones as it can be kind of a challenge as you're essentially locking yourself away for two years on a contract with the carrier of your choice. There's around four in the United States and then tons of them uh, everywhere else in the world. And we're going to be talking about a prepaid option and just a different kind of option than your traditional carrier route. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. So up first here is the Samsung Galaxy S5. And this is one of those phones you can find on any carrier's line, any part in the world, because Samsung's pretty much jamming this down every carrier's throat and telling them to feature it, which is not a bad thing in this case. So it features a quad core processor, a 16 megapixel camera, which is gonna be perfect for rear facing photos and for the front facing camera, it has a great camera on there as well. So that's gonna be perfect for Snapchat, Instagram, whatever you do with your besties or your bays. What are they calling it these days? Also it's IP67 certified, which means you can get this phone wet up to a meter's worth of water for 30 minutes and you're gonna be totally fine. I actually went swimming up to an hour and tested it at its one meter depth and it survived. And then just for the fun of it, I threw it in my washer to see if it'd last. And it was very interesting. The phone still works to this day, uh, but having that water resistance is nice over other smartphones that don't really feature it. So also for smartphone users, battery life is a big issue, but luckily Samsung has done something about about this and with one touch of a button it turns on ultra power saving mode which converts that big beautiful super AMOLED display into a black and white panel which really conserves battery life and I did a fun thing where I charged the phone up to 100% switched on ultra power saving mode and that phone will just last for days so you can find this phone anywhere from $199 to below on pretty much any carrier in the United States and globally and it's definitely one of those I'd recommend so moving on here it is the iPhone 5s another phone that you can find pretty much anywhere in the world on any carriers line and the good news about this one is it has a smaller display now that can either be viewed as a pro or a con but unlike the Samsung Galaxy S5's 5.1 inch display this guy rocks a 4 inch display has an 8 megapixel camera looks fantastic for Instagram shots and it's my Instagram phone just for that in itself. It has a really good app selection and there's a lot of accessories for the iPhone. Another reason I'd choose the iPhone 5S over the Galaxy S5 is if you wear tighter fitted clothing and sometimes your pockets aren't as big, sometimes those five inch plus devices won't really work and that's kind of when the iPhone 5S will. I know a lot of people that kind of chose the iPhone 5S and just the smaller devices just for that reason alone, and I think you'll be all set with the 5S. So the last option here is the Moto G. So when this phone first came out, I completely wrote it off the list, didn't even give it a shot, and since it was $129 off contract, um, I was a little bit intrigued and I just thought this was another phone for another emerging market. But for the price, this phone is pretty damn fast. And when you stack it against other smartphones, the results might surprise you. So this is a perfect phone for parents just looking to give their kids a smartphone. And yes, this is a smartphone and don't be shocked by the price because it does some pretty cool things and is pretty fast and is running software from this century. So I'd recommend this to, again, parents looking to give their kids their first type of smartphone, parents looking to equip freshmen for the back to school season. Uh, and Boost Mobile has some good plans over there. Um, and I've tested their service. It's not too bad in my area and it is very good in some areas. So for $99, you'll get this phone. And for $50 a month, you'll get unlimited talk and text and you'll get two and a half gigs of data. So you're pretty much all set there. You can browse the web, email, Twitter, Snapchat. I, I keep talking about Snapchat because I probably have started to use it a little bit more than I did in the past because I thought it was a fad. Um, and it has Android 4.4 KitKat on there. Um, it's a pretty fast phone and it's definitely one of those you wanna check out. If you're a person who doesn't wanna commit to a smartphone like an iPhone 5S, an LG G3, a Samsung Galaxy S5, any one of the flagships. And if you lose this phone, you can always buy off contract for $129 and just replace it and hook it right back up to Boost Mobile. Um, so it's not the end of the world there. So honorable mentions go out to the Galaxy Note 3, which has a pretty big display 
and a stylus. So if that's your thing, definitely jump on that one. The HTC One M8. This phone has a fantastic build quality. I love the software on there. Front-facing speakers should be on every single phone, but the camera can be a little bit iffy, so just watch out for that. And then the last one is the LG G3. This phone feels fantastic in the hands. It has a 5.5-inch display, laser autofocus, which is awesome, and it has not code. I did that right, backwards, looking at the viewfinder. Um, so it's just a fantastic phone. And these are all phones that if you're looking to get into the smartphone game, I definitely recommend. So if none of these options appeal to you, here are some phone shopping tips. First and foremost, I'd shop at Best Buy because they have some pretty sweet deals going on. And oftentimes you can find a free smartphone that would normally cost probably $200 or so. Also, you can go ahead and trade in your old gadgets to give you the equivalent value of an iPhone 5S or a Samsung Galaxy S5 which are normally $200 and that doesn't include the tax, the fees, etc. because you're just gonna have to pay those even if you just bought it outright with the cost. You guys get my drift here. Also, I shopped at Best Buy when I was purchasing my first iPhone back in 2009. It was, I think, eighth grade year. I had got the grades and I was just looking to get my first iPhone because that's what all the cool kids had back in my day. So we shopped at Best Buy because they were friendly, nice, uh, just from previous experiences, that's kind of changed um, in 2014. And they got us all set up, we were out of the door within 30 minutes, um, and it was just a really good experience, really kind of fun to look back on because that was my first iPhone, and that's kind of when I started the YouTube channel. All right, now I'm getting all sappy and emotional, but back to the story here, if you wanna get a good smartphone, I'd check Best Buy because they probably have some good deal going on. So before you guys go ahead and jump on any of the phones that I talked about previously, I'd suggest waiting just a little bit. So we have three new phones coming out, the iPhone 6, the Galaxy Note 4, which is alleged to feature some really cool stuff, and the Moto X Plus One. I did a video on that. That video can be linked right below that like button. So you might want to wait to see what those options feature. Definitely wait if you're going to go and purchase the iPhone 5S just to view your options. And for the Galaxy Note 3, if you're looking at that, wait till the Note 4. And for the Moto G, you might want to wait if you're a big Motorola fan as the X Plus One will feature some really cool stuff. So that's just my little warning to you guys but if you're really eager right now and you like what you see definitely go and jump on it these phones should last you around two years but obviously they'll have their little quirks along the way thank you guys so much for watching this video where we talked about the best back to school phones and this is just my list of phones there's tons of great smartphones out on the market but these are just some of the ones that I've had some great experiences with and I know a lot of first-time students or veteran students would really enjoy if you guys like this video and want me to keep doing more videos in the series then go and give it a big thumbs up as it really helps the channel out a bunch and again lets me know you guys want more videos like this this. Also, while you're at it, drop me a comment down below letting me know which smartphone you guys have or which smartphone you're looking to buy for that back to school season. And finally, go and subscribe to the channel. There's a button right down below or an annotation right up here as it lets you know when a brand new back to school video does come out and when we have more cool coverage on the iPhone 6, Moto X Plus One, and the Galaxy Note 4. Thank you guys once again, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.